Hello, I'm John from Maker Gear Sales, and I'm here to show you today how to get your files into your Ultra One 3D printer, load them, and start a print in duplication mode. For this example, we will be using the knurled bolt from Thingiverse, which is our standard test print. And I've already set up the profile and sliced it in duplication mode. Simplify 3D is included with your purchase of an Ultra One, and tech support is live. On the other side of this wall is a very patient man that will help you through any problems that you may have. I've already saved it and exported it, and now I will go over to our page where you can actually access the 3D printer. It is actually called, it's a website basically on your network once you upload it and get it all set up. You can access it on the Octopi. There's a board on there that actually broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal. It can be connected to Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or completely offline if your needs require that. Here you have, we have a custom uh, Octopi image built in, and you can add some plugins. You can add a webcam. You can see the G-code, and there is better G-code viewers available through the Octopi website. You can enter terminal. You can actually type in your own commands. And there's even a more advanced screen here that it, you can access on the Duet. The Duet does have its own web page for troubleshooting or advanced users. Back to this. So I'm going to upload a test print, the one I've already sliced in duplication mode. And here is the G code that I've already sliced. I'm just going to upload down here. You can see that all my temperatures are cold right now. Now that's uploaded, it is black, meaning that it has not been printed. Green means it has completed, and red has mean it has been canceled. So automatically your G code is uploaded to the queue, ready to go, or you can select another one or hit print. When you're looking at this, you can actually see more of the details, how long it should take, the last time it was printed, uh, some various details about the G-code. It just takes a while to process. So for this example, we're just going to hit print. And now the printer has the G-code already loaded on it and the Pi is sending it to the board. So let's cut to the Ultra One. Okay, here's the Ultra One in my office. This is one of our test units that we do a lot of experimentation on. But you, your product will be refined and finished and tested and calibrated before it even leaves the facility. So you can see here that the Ultra One's in its default state. Everything's been homed. It just probed its the center point to probe the offset. So let's get a little closer to that LCD and see how it looks. Here we are at the LCD. You can see that it tells you the name of the printer. It tells you the IP address on the network and the status of the print including the file name, the bed temperatures, the nozzle temperatures, and if it were printing, you'd see how much time we're estimated once it stabilizes. On the main menu, you have these five options where you can set up a print. You can load the print from the G-code provided on the SD card. You can just see the one I just did. You can see many of them, and you can print. Back to the main menu, you can Shut off the LCD, shut off the printer, power cycle, firmware reset, many options here. Let's go back. Temperature. From here, you can set the temperatures of the nozzles and the bed. So you can go to click on the blank space and set it up for PLA. Hit OK, and then lock that in. Now your bed is warming up to 60 degrees Celsius. And as it goes, you can print from there. And if you want to warm it up, you can turn the fans on or off. And even from here, if you select this, you can actually control that specific printer just from the temperature page and go back to control. And you have act control over every axis and homing everything, including just turning the motors off. You can access Wi-Fi, it can broadcast its own Wi-Fi point, and you can access it just like it's its own internet. You won't have your internet on your device, but you can just control it through the same Octopi interface on any network device. Uh, the connection, 
is just the current connection and this is be this is for debugging purposes network info you can see all the available wi-fi access points while it's processing a print i don't think we're going to see that and that are that is all of the functions that you can do on the lcd it's much more powerful on the website so now that it's going to start a print let's see what it does so here the bed is prepping, it's warm. The bed has to be at the temperature you want to print before it will probe. There's a BL touch that physically touches the bed. You can see the reflection of it on the bed. It touches the probe offset, double checks that, and then goes to each corner to verify the status of the bed level. Each one of these corners is supported by its own motor and its own uh, M12, I believe, guide rail. So we have linear rails on X and Y, and then we have smooth rod with, with those bearings in the vertical. In the back there, you can see a filament runout sensor. So when filament stops being fed through there, it will park and set right here, waiting for you to reload it. In the very back there, you can see that it has a activated carbon filter that is replaceable and can also be ducted out of your facility if you need be. It does, have, it does have an enclosure. I'll bring it down in the next part of the video. So it's just completed its four corners and it may do a correction of the bed while it warms up. Actually, since it's due in duplication mode, it won't even need to do the uh, mesh bed leveling for this because it is not necessary because it's very hard to mesh bed level for two separate points. These two nozzles will both engage at the same time and start printing. So mesh bed leveling is actually not needed for this print. It just attributes to how flat our plates are and how precise our machine is that it can actually hold a point on two different areas of the same plane on the same piece of metal. Even th that's a very hard thing to do. And here you see it's about to actually hit the temperature it needs to print. I set it for 210. The filament's already loaded, and so it should about be about to kick on once it stabilizes. Let's see how that looks. So just in time, both extruders are going to do a purge line. It's gonna get some of that filament out of the way. And then it's gonna start the print. And it's doing the same thing on the left as it is doing on the right. This doubles your output when you have a standard print and you can just crank out pieces as fast as humanly possible. Let's get a little closer. Here you can see all of the linear rails. We have genuine CPC rails all around. Forced belts. Custom CNC pieces in house. We do all of this in Beechwood, Ohio. This is a direct drive. So the filament gets pushed from right above where it is extruded. That makes it very versatile with flexible filaments, uh, ABS, uh, many t different types of materials. You won't have to worry about it being pushed through a tube. These are just for the guide from the filament bay. Our heat break is actually very unique in the fact that there's a physical disconnection between the hot end below and the cold end above. Many companies have tried to use some type of cooling there to try to just, you know, to mitigate the heat transfer between the top and bottom. Here we've just disconnected it and the entire fan is actually a heat sink where it's mounted is an aluminum heat sink and as the fan blows, it cools off that area. Making a very crisp transition from cold to hot makes for a very good print. On the red side of the machine, this is the filament bay. You can load two one kilogram spools of your material into there and it is fed up through a funnel that actually feeds it into the filament runout sensor. You can actually put remove these spool holders and install your own dry boxes if needed and then run them straight from a dry box into there 
You can also remove this and put a five pound spool in here on one side and maybe a space for the uh, one kilogram spool on the other side. This is sealed so that if you want to put some type of dehydration system in there to make sure it stays dry, you can do that as well. The chamber is warmed by the build plate, so if you are using ABS, the build plate can get to 110 degrees Celsius. It does have its own enclosure, and you can close with a gall bay door, and it stays very warm in there. So your prints won't warp, and you'll make sure that you maintain the certain temperatures you're trying to achieve. So hopefully you can see the benefits of having a Maker Gear Ultra 1 with its duplication mode. Obviously we'll have mixed color mode where you can do two colors in one piece or single extruder mode, whichever works best for you. There are dissolvable filaments out there on the market. You can use for standard print on this side and then on this side use PVA to dissolve and that supports away for a nice clean finish. So I hope this found you well, and if once this is done, I'll put a little bit after the at the end for B-roll. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. So it's been a few hours now, and the bolts are still printing. It's going to take at least uh, three, maybe four more hours for this to be done. So in the interest of time, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Thank you. If you're interested in buying a Maker Gear 3D printer, please contact me at sales at makergear.com. Again, my name is John, and I hope you are interested in our machines and uh, see the value in the product that we make here proudly in America. Thanks. Have a great day.